Welcome everybody to Illinois Liberty Fest 2018. I'm Raylan Schraka, the chair for Illinois Liberty. Uh, right now I'd like to introduce Pastor Giovanetti for the opening prayer. Well, everybody, we picked an exciting sunny day to do this. So <laughs> let's break through the clouds with some prayer. You know, this, may, this state and this nation needs God aggressively. And I'm so appreciative of the Liberty of, the, of Liberty Tea Party, you know, who's willing to go across all over and just stir up the element to say you need to make a difference. Prayer is a tremendous power, a tremendous war in authority. But if prayer doesn't connect itself with action, then we've got nothing accomplished. We need to pray and move, pray and vote, pray and operate, pray and speak. We need to put it together so we have God and country once again operating. So with that, that's how, we'll, that's how we'll open it up today. Father, in the excellent name of Jesus, we thank you. You gave us the right to govern ourselves. But you also gave us the standard, your standards. And Father, we truly believe that you gave us this nation. And we are one nation under God. That's, that's what we are to be, our flag below the power of the cross of Calvary. Father, that, that flag has been, has, been, has been birthed and operated by the blood of multitudes of lives. Those that have given themselves for our ability to live free according to your standards and your word. Now, Father, we've gathered in this place because the state of this nation is in a desperate need of revival and of you, Father, and it's in desperate need of the people of God to rise up and begin to vote the conscience, begin to take their place. Father, we are Christians and citizens. We are members of this nation, this great nation, and we want to see this nation once again, Father, to be great again. So I thank you for each one that's gathered today, and Father, we speak that your favor and your, and your anointing on every voice here that, Father, wherever they travel and wherever they go across this state, that, Father, the word that they have, a word to bring America back to God and the truth and, and, and the right way to govern will be heard and heard in the hearts of multitudes of citizens. Father, awaken your people to action. We ask you, Father, therefore, them to bless this day. Bless the work that they have done. If they've traveled hard, if, they, if they're working, Father, in the elements, Father, make it a success again and again and again and we'll give you the praise in jesus name amen amen, amen. all right now uh oath keepers i guess we've got the flag up already <laughs> if you turn and pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, there is one little thing I would like to comment on, is that the progressive agenda and the mainstream media has helped to contrive a war to pit Americans against each other. And they are calling it liberals versus conservatives. The progressives are claiming to be liberals, but they are not. They are actually the opposite of a, uh, liberals and progressives are actually opposites. Uh, if you will look up progressive party, you will see that they come from the progressive party. And they actually are communists and socialists that have been infiltrating our political system and posing as liberals. And that is what has created this war. Their whole goal is to divide and conquer. We need to stop this faux war of liberal versus conservative and join together with the liberals to go after the real enemy, and that is the progressives who are com communists and uh, socialists. And now I'd like to introduce our MC for the day, Brian Lang with Life Truth Radio. Thank you, Ray Lynn. And uh, first off, thank you, Pastor for that great message. Thank you for those words because it's absolutely true. We're being infiltrated by communists. The communist, socialist, fascist, Marxist. That's what we need to get out of this country and start being American again, period. Where, where is it here in this country where we have all this going on, all these fights with the Antifa, the Black Lives Matter, they're all funded by who? Anybody? George Soros. George Soros. Yeah. About communists and everybody else that's around him, everything that he funds is communistic. 
We have to get the word out. We have, I say all the time on my radio broadcast, stand up. Speak out. Get involved. That's right. Stand up, speak out, and get involved because that's what we need to do here in America. And as I also say all the time on my broadcast, we have to have our nation get back to God. We get back to God, this country, the communists will leave. They won't have nothing to do. We have to get back to God, period. All right, that's my opening statement. All right. <laughs> Illinois Family Institute. Pastor, wait a minute, is this right? Are you going to be speaking too? Yeah. All right. Pat, I'll just say Pastor G, okay? Yeah, that's cool. Pastor G, come on up here and enlighten us with all your words. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to lower this down. He's a little fella. He can handle this. All right, that's good enough. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's why in churches we have pulpits that are several steps. When I pray for people, I always make them step down. Why? Because this is really you know, difficult to work with. Illinois Family Institute, and Illinois Family Action, I'm, and I'm a board member with, their, their goal is to bring the family value issues back into the state of Illinois. And as, and as Illinois Family Action, they work to fund those that will stand up for the true values that we believe that America was birthed on and stood on. They are, they, are, they are not party affiliated. They're looking for good candidates in every single district that will run for office, that will stand up for the values that we believe that we need to stand in for a state. We know our state is in bankruptcy in so many areas. We got, we got uh, all kinds of things going on with all the perversion that which is now being promoted and e even like uh, the legalizations of, of marijuana, the LGBTQ community, uh, gambling is out there, everything which is destroying the fabric of the family. And it's imperative because you have the family fall apart, then the state takes over all the kids. <coughs> That's one of the biggest problems that they're dealing with right now. you got a state trying to run a generation, they can control the mindset of a generation, take the generation away from the families, and away from the parents, and then indoctrinate that, that generation to their standards, and therefore bring it again, that communistic value which says everything belongs to the government, and then nobody else has a voice or a say so. All the power goes to one. And Illinois Family Institute works hard to push to keep things like abortion under control because we're trying to get rid of it. Of course, that's a difficult thing to do, but you've got to keep fighting because if we are a nation of liberty and freedom where every life matters, then why is it that we can, that we can slaughter 60 million kids? Why do we just have such a power run of money which is, which is actually steeped in, in, in the selling of fetal tissue and the other things that go on? So, so what Illinois Family is, is working to do is they have lobbyists in Springfield. And the lobbyists are always out there trying to push, you know, for bill after bill after bill after bill. But because of Mike Madigan and those that are happen to be ruling down there, everything that has any value for the family, for faith, for your kids, you know, everything that has anything to do with this is always being stolen. And so, so what they put out there is, is a bunch of different things that they want. Kind of like the Springfield update, which you, which you see you have there. And on the front, you've got all the values that we're trying to work on. Marriage, come on. That's between one man and one woman. In fact, we're even trying to protect people that do not believe in gay marriage. In other words, if you don't believe in gay marriage and you speak out against gay marriage, you cannot get in trouble. If these, they're, they're trying to pass laws which, which make it illegal for you to actually oppose something. I mean, isn't that amazing? Here we are, a free speech nation, quote unquote, but if you speak out against a specific type of free speech, then suddenly your speech is hate, homophobic, bigoted, and those are the things that they always want to use. You are a hate monger. You're a homophobic. You're a bigot. You're a racist. Anything that they want to use if you do not agree with their agenda, which means that all of our free speech values and rights, once again, have to be protected. So if I disagree, okay, let's explain why I disagree. And if you think that my speech no longer is a safe speech, that means you're trying to hide something behind your speech because you know that if I really speak what I know to be true, then what you're trying to say is going to be exposed as the lie that it truly is. That's one of the biggest reasons for fighting all the free speech in any kind of a state or any situation is because they fear that the other side really knows the truth, the whole truth and nothing but, and that truth ever comes out that a, that a, you know, that a generation is beginning to become educated. And once they find out, then they begin to realize and think for themselves that this is crazy and we're being led down a pathway to our total destruction. That's where socialism always leads to communism. That is always going to be the goal. 
And that is, that is absolute dictatorial power. And, you know, and years ago we never would have thought of that in this nation, but now we're realizing this is a serious goal. And, we, and watching the Antifa and the things that are going on, they're really trying to push the entire education system, your universities, to follow this garbage, and therefore these are, they are become their minions. They are the activists for their agenda that they are radically going to promote until their ignorance is exposed and it's too late. One of the things that I like to deal with, and we talked about faith and value in God, is where does the church stand in the state of Illinois? For me, as a pastor, where do you stand? When we deal with the pro-life or we deal with the gay agenda, we've had to fight these things, as you see. One of the challenges that we had was, was when we were traveling, trying to get churches on board to actually fight the issue. Okay, churches, pastors, leaders. And for some reason, we got a lot of no, we got phones hung up, people don't want to respond to it, they don't want to speak on it. And we found out that the value of Christianity is sometimes in a radical crisis that they don't even know what they believe and why they believe. In fact, they're so dumbing down their value because they want to be, you know, everybody friendly that they no longer carry a semblance of any kind of conviction in order to bring people around to the place they need to be. The church must play a powerful role. And I mean by the church, I mean the body of Christ. Christianity across the state must be radically stirred so they can run their race. And I tell you, if we claim to have 60, 66 million Christians in America, I think we should be able to change the state of a nation. If 66 true, genuine people who call themselves Christians, who carry the morals of the Word of God of the Bible, just the simple standards of our Constitution and, and, and our foundation, we could radically bring this nation around. We would not be in the moral demise and in the, and in the economic demise that we have been if we had Christians standing up for the truth. Now, you'll understand now, one of the things that I, I had here, and this was posted on Illinois Family. If you look, if you can see this at all, you see, you see all the dark blue, okay? That's against the light blue. The dark blue, all these are denominations, churches. In this, all these are churches, in this, all these are churches of the nation. And this was, do you believe in abortion? Do you believe in abortion? And the dark blue tells you the high percentage of church members that actually truly believe in abortion, and many at all stages. That shows the absolute ignorance, from my perspective, in pulpits across America. What are you preaching? What are you teaching? Where are your standards? How are we going to protect our kids against the gay community if we can't even protect our kids in the womb, if we think that our kids in the womb are, have no value, then our students and our kids as a whole then have no value. Where do you draw the line and put value on a young generation? You, you either start from the very beginning, the absolute, that there are, there, there are absolutes, and the protection of our kids from the womb all the way up. Cradle to grave needs to be, needs to be given to God, to let God's word so that they can pursue happiness and freedom. And if your church doesn't know this standard, then what other standards do they not have a standard for? Then where else will they compromise across this nation? And then when your kids have struggles and problems, and they need to be counseled, and they've tried to, they tried to pass laws where we cannot counsel kids struggling with sexual identity, or churches can't even get involved. When the kid is walking suicidal because he's got an internal conflict or she's got an internal conflict, and then you tell me that that kid's just got to deal with it because it's good for your political agenda, and if that kid dies, somehow you're going to blame me. We have a problem, and the church cannot stand up or will not stand up. That's an issue. Well, the Illinois family is running hard with its lobbyists in Springfield. And, they're, and again, they're working to find candidates all across the state. Their voter's guide, which will be up online soon, what we do is we go after every candidate, answer the questions, <clears throat> Answer the questions. If you cannot answer the questions, then why? I had a guy call me once, and he did not, and he was running for governor, I don't know, probably like in the last election or so. And they wanted the endorsement of Illinois Family Institute. And I said, where do you stand on the issue? How about the issue of gay marriage? Well, I don't want to have a standard on that. Look, I think it should just be left up to the state. Dude, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, maybe, today, your no vote is a yes vote. If you believe in family, if you believe in faith and value, then, then you need to step up and you need to make a decision. You need to put it out there on your platform and take the risk and let it, and let it hit where it falls because you've got to be somebody of, char of, of character and caliber or there's no way you're going to get any kind of endorsement. You've got to protect our kids right now. You've got to make a decision where you're going to stand. And if you can not stand up and make a decision now, you will not get an endorsement from our organization at all. So they had to make a decision. And then their top party manager ended up calling me and saying, we made a decision. Well, fine. 
you need to, you don't just say it because I said so. And I had a 45 minute discussion with their top aides. You've got to make a decision. And what you're doing here is you're challenging people to make a decision. Illinois families do this, that's what they're doing. All across the state, they're fighting to put a demand that people make a decision. Gambling is destroying our kids. And marijuana as a gateway drug is destroying our kids. And we got the gay, the gay agenda now is in your school. They want to teach from kindergarten to 12th grade. They want to, they want to have our kids proficient in gay, lesbian, transgendered people throughout history. More important than George Washington, more important than Thomas Jefferson, more important than Benjamin, you know, Benjamin Franklin, more important than any of the real icons of our nation. They want to make sure that our kids know perversion more than anything else. So I thank you all for inviting us out. We are here fighting for you. Again, you can get our, our voters guys will be up online. All of our stuff is there. We've got all kinds of staff and facts to keep you guys moving. But thank you again. God bless.